corners of the internet to the wave signals in your brain. You are now synced into all aware. Against the norm you are expanding your mind and educating your soul. Your journey has begun. Let the transmissions commence. Welcome to reality. Broadcasting from the heart of it all in Columbus, Ohio. This is all aware. Please stand by for your host Nathan Roseron. And hello everybody, welcome to All Aware. I am Nathan Roshan. It is 2017. It's our first episode back for the new year. Here for 2017. Donald Trump is the new president of the United States. Took uh, office, uh, what was it, on January 20th, 21st was his inauguration. So we welcome in a new president this year. It is a one year in numerology, a one year, which means um, yeah, last year was a nine year. Um, that means new beginnings, folks. That means uh, um, the ability to um, start fresh. Um, not every year is a one year. Uh, 2017 is. And how do you get that? You add up the two, the zero, the one, and the seven. And you break that down to a single digit. Once you get there, you'll get a one. So welcome aboard All Aware. First episode of this year. We're going to go a little esoteric tonight and talk about some stuff that we've, um, you know, said we were going to talk about. I believe it might even have been, oh my gosh, it might have been 2016, 2015 even, uh, when we dis- when we discussed going into uh, some of these programs, and I'm finally going to get into it tonight. We're going to talk about uh, a secret space program that might be going on in the world and might probably has been going on for some time. You know, we all know about the the moon landings, right? And now we can get on a whole sub- separate topic about if those actually happened if they were faked that's another topic for another day but going with what we know and what we've been told the moon landings happened in the 60s into the early 70s that was when the apollo program was launched that was when uh, astronauts went to the moon stepped foot on the moon Um, we had john glenn we had buzz aldrin and everybody was so excited and so happy so like just proud to be an American for accomplishing that and for, you know, stepping foot on another planet. What if it went way beyond that? What if we actually have and have had a secret military based program that operated in space and has operated in space since about that same amount of time? And not only have they gone to the moon, but by now they have traveled far beyond and have even possibly reached other planets, including Mars and maybe some even further than that. And what if this secret space program involves multiple countries and also multiple species? (laughs) That would be bizarre, wouldn't it? What if there were confederations? and alliances that have formed in space from different beings. And what if we have a seat at that table? Now, these are all things that have been discussed by David Wilcock in his book, The Ascension Mysteries, and other publications on his website and on his television program that is featured on Gaia.com called Cosmic Disclosure. It has been brought forth by people such as Corey Good, who was a supposed um, participant or groomed soldier for this secret space program. 
And there have been other people who have stepped forward. I am I am not comfortable releasing the names of the other people that we um, have kind of researched that may have stepped forward. And the reason being is because they're not as confirmed. They're not as confirmed. Corey Good has come forward. Um, I don't know if it was in 2014 or or before. That's about when I started to hear about this individual. But he has said a lot of what has happened and what has gone on. And a lot of it has correlated with other theories and other statements from researchers of what this program might be, might have been, might still be. That's why I I, I want to talk about specifically his revelations and his uh, statements. The secret space program is not just talked about by this individual or the person who brought him to limelight, which was David Wilcock, but it has been brought up by various, um, let's say, conspiracy um, researchers. It has been brought up by Dr. Michael Sala from Exopolitics. It has been brought up by um, many different individuals, including like Jesse Ventura, Ventura, the uh, once famous wrestler and then turned political mayor of was it Minnesota, I think. A lot of people have talked about this. And one of the things that has been talked about is the type of weaponry and the type of energy that is actually existing today that is being concealed and withheld from the American population and the world population. It is what these programs operate on. Stuff such as zero-point energy, anti-gravity. I mean, engines that you would you would assume would only be seen in Star Trek or Star Wars or some science fiction film. It's hard to think that this stuff could actually exist today in 2017. And uh, why are they hiding it from us? What is the purpose? Do they think we cannot handle the truth? Or is it something else? Is it something that if we did know, we really couldn't handle? And what are they doing up there? We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll go more into the theories and statements of Corey Good from uh, the sphere being alliance.com is his website and a little bit more about what David Wilcox says about and in, in his wisdom teachings and in his uh, cosmic disclosure show about this secret space program. So stay tuned to all aware. We will be right back right after this. You are listening to the all aware podcast on the true Rands network. If you are a fan of this show on the true Rants network, Visit us online at truerands.net. And welcome back to All Aware. We are talking about uh, secret space programs that we are not aware of that could be operating uh, outside of the atmosphere. And that could have been around for some time. A whistleblower from a secret space program, Corey Good has come forward since, uh, I want to say about 2014. It's when I started to hear about him. He has come forward and uh, has brought a lot of light to this subject and has got a lot of researchers, UFO um, theorists, uh, working on discovering if this has any merit to it, and which it seems to, as odd as that sounds. So who is this Corey guy? So Corey... Apparently, from his website, his history states that he was abducted at the age of six into a MyLab program. Uh, MyLab would be military abduction program. Um, There's a ton of these SAPs that apparently operate that we're unaware of. You've heard of the Black Budget. Well, apparently the Black Budget has a lot to do with these types of programs. But anyways, he was... Uh, apparently abducted at the age of six and he was indoctrinated into this program which would eventually have him working on secret missions within the black ops programs 
from 1976 to about 1987. And apparently, towards the end of his tour in these uh, shadowy secret programs, he was assigned to fill a support role for an Earth Delicate seat. So basically, he was asked to sit on a (laughs) multi-species Congress-type, Senate-type seat of power or whatever to discuss issues within the universe and on planet earth uh i guess he calls it a super federation council that's what it was and see Corey has some uh abilities such as uh he's he's an empath um psychic has a couple of those uh supernatural type abilities Well, for some, they would be considered supernatural. For people listening to the show, it's probably more natural than supernatural. If you're interested in this type of programming, uh, you probably have researched a little bit into that or may even have uh, some of those abilities. So in this uh, secret space program where he worked for over 20 years, um, he was assigned to several different programs. Uh, an interrogation program, a space research program, an SRV program, which is like, I guess, interstellar vehicle, maybe maintenance. And after this, in more recent years, he's been called back to assist from like 2007 up to today, because there are things going on uh, within the planet and without the side of the planet that we could talk about, but it would take a whole nother episode. Uh, <laughs> I mean, a lot of episodes to go through, but having to do with the ascension process that the planet is going through right now and having to do with the fall of the cabal, which is the um, dark, greedy forces that had been in control of planet Earth up until today and still, you know, may have some control uh, over some of the things we can go into that on another podcast if you guys are interested in that but we're going to stay on topic here with this um, for this podcast so if you have any questions you can google that Um, you can google the you know the secret cabal or the illuminati or whatever you want to call them and there's a lot of information up there and it's up to you to you know decide what you think is factual and what's not but um, there is some truth behind most of the stuff that you come to to know but during this time um cory talks about coming in contact with beings of other worlds extraterrestrials beings of other dimensions and he claims that there are you know malevolent ones as well as benevolent ones you know there are good uh, uh aliens as well as not so good and they all have different agendas one of the um very interesting facts about what he has proposed is that these beings who we have been working with since probably the 40s 50s and have been working with human civilizations since the beginning of time and we progress we get technology uh, at a point we discover them um, they work with us and uh, influence a lot of the things that happen Uh, in the past these civilizations have seemed to always fall and then another civilization um, takes over and the process just keeps continuing and what's different about this this civilization this process apparently the universe that we are attached to is changing Corey good states how um when he had talked uh to these beings and he has been getting getting information from them for some time. There is a situation occurring where the universe in which we sit in as a planet, in our planet itself, is being liberated. Planet Earth is a, well, was essentially a slave planet. A planet that was either for souls who, for some reason, uh, needed to learn lessons, or it was for like workers you know worker type you know basically slave races like us humans but he says um during these programs he said he can remember when he one of his first meetings up there he was brought into you know to a ship into a room 
where he was sat amongst a table with various beans, and he was given a tablet, kind of like an iPad, but apparently it was all glass and see-through and somehow linked more mentally than through touch. He was told to just go through it. Um, he was told it had secrets and knowledge that he needed to become aware of. And uh, in his interviews on uh, Coast to Coast AM and on uh, Gaia TV channel show Cosmic Disclosure, he discusses how some stuff was kind of blocked out, but the amount of information he got off of that device was, I mean, immense. And uh, it's hard to believe. I mean, if you're if you're tuning into the show for the first time, if you're visiting these types of ideas for the first time this sounds like bs it sounds like some far out far-fetched crazy unbelievable thoughts and to some it might sound like the people that believe this including myself are insane see what has happened is there has been so much deceit and so much hidden from us and so many lies that our world the true nature of our creation and of our reality is so much different than that that uh, of that which we have been taught brought up with so maybe if we did not have a cloud over our heads since birth and that's almost all of us then maybe this won't sound so weird but because we have this is only what you see in the movies but then if you think about it where do movies come from movies television shows we decide somebody decides what those programs are going to be about what they're going to include in them and you might say well yeah that's what writers do it's imagination is it though do you think somebody has that immaculate of an imagination that detailed of an imagination to be able to come up with the intricacies of the technologies and of the everything in in these sci-fi shows and in these movies where everything just clicks together and makes sense is that all you know, fake? Is that all make-believe? And then other writers with other shows, you know, are able to link this into their TV show or into their movie and progress upon it with other things. Is this all just make-believe? It could be. And if it is, then my God, we seem to have more of an ability to make things up and more of an ability to, uh, we have way more of an exciting imagination than, than the real life then. And that could be, I'm not here to dispute that, but is there some truth behind everything? Yeah, I have a friend who is a, uh, he's a ins- uh, kind of a, he's inspiring, um, his inspiration is to be a director. And he's been working on this for a very, very long time. And he has written screenplays and uh, movie plots. And just recently, uh, I caught up with this guy. And I was uh, visiting him at his apartment, and uh, he was like, "You know, I want to, I want to show you something. You know, take, take a look at this." And he showed me a, a script on his computer, and I'm not gonna go into exactly what was on that script. I'm not gonna, um, you know, call him out that way because this is his, um, his life's work. Honestly, it's really his life's work. But it was very, very detailed. I mean, it, it was just detailed. It was a very, it was, it was a sci-fi type of uh, script. That goes deep into the lives of these people and their their abilities and their lifestyles. And how could one know what, you know, the lifestyle of these individuals? I mean, is it based on fact? I mean, he had a guy who, you know, came from, you know, humble upbringings. He had someone who came from um, an abusive upbringing. He had someone you know, from another type of, you know, environment. Is this just his imagination? Or was he basing those off of real people that he met in life or may have experienced himself? Because knowing this guy since high school, when I was reading this document, some of that stuff came from his real friends, came from his real experiences. And then he did add some imaginatory factors into that, but it came from truth. So I guess my point is there is an element of truth in everything. So where is the truth in this? We know, at least we were told we went to the moon. We saw photographs and video images of men walking on the surface of the moon. So if you extrapolate from that, is it possible to have a secret space program that developed during that time and still exists today? And if it is possible, then now, right today, in 2017, what do you imagine 
that space program would be like. They scrapped the United States um, Challenger ships and uh, vessels just within the last recent years. Why? Is it because they don't want to travel to space anymore? Is it because it's wasted money because they have something better? They have something more advanced and they've been doing it for years. Is it just, I mean, do different countries have uh, their own secret space programs or is it like a global thing? These are questions that we're not sure. We don't know, but it is possible, right? So let's go back to this whistleblower and um, what he's saying about these secret space programs. In Donald Trump's inaugural speech, he might have been hinting at these secret space programs. In his inauguration speech challenging the vested interests that control political life in Washington, D.C., President Donald Trump spoke of a future where humanity has full access to the kind of advanced technologies allegedly used in these secret space programs. He appeared to be hinting at the benefits of official disclosure of these programs and bringing forth the interested parties who had been hiding this information. There was kind of one line in his speech that he talked about this. He said, We stand at the birth of a new millennium, ready to unlock the mysteries of space, to free the earth from the miseries of disease, and to harness the energies, industries, and technologies of tomorrow. Now, the key phrase was unlock. He says, ready to unlock the mysteries of space. So maybe Donald Trump knows a little bit about these secret space programs. After all, he is, uh, I don't i don't know if I want to call them friends, but he is acquainted with Jesse Ventura, which also has connections uh, and beliefs within this. So maybe they talked about it. But unlock the mysteries of space, to me, would suggest that there were programs, there was information that had been locked away from the general public, and he intends to unlock that. Maybe he's just saying that he will, you know, research, maybe it's just UFO disclosure. I don't know. But you got to look at the interesting words. Like, he picked words. Now, I know the mainstream media is trying to say he did not write his speech. I don't know. If he did, you don't know. But let's take people for their for their word. He said he wrote the speech. He may or may not have wrote the speech, but he talked the speech. He spoke the speech. And the speech said, unlock the mysteries of space. That's a interesting phrase. He didn't say, have our researchers discover what's happening in space. He said, unlock the mysteries of space. Now, I could be reading more into this than I should be. Well, this is what you do. When you think critically, you know. So, have you seen, if you've seen the film, uh, is it, I think it's Captain America Winter Soldier. There, there are indications, I guess I should call them um, hypotheses or hypotheses, that that is a soft disclosure film. That the technology that you see in that film actually exists to some extent. I think they called them helicarriers, which uh, were flying like crafts that were almost like, you know, the Navy um, aircraft carriers, but they operated in uh, space, you know, in the atmosphere, and they carried other space vehicles and flying vehicles. So if you ask the space program um, theorists, they would tell you that those actually exist. And if you look at... um, what we know about history, what we know about the military industrial complex, industrial complex, um, they tend to, to, to stay between 30 to 50 years ahead in technology. Now, I'm even willing to say they're hundreds of years more advanced, and this is why. If you remember in the 1990s, um, we, had, uh, we still had pay phones and we still had uh, corded phones in the 90s. We had this. We had television but we didn't have the widescreen uh, shot film because we had those little box TVs. And from 95 till 2000, uh, 2003, let's go to 2003, we'll say that. So from 95 to 2003, less than 10 years, we went from having corded phones and pay phones to car phones, which were still corded, and box TVs 
and VHS cassettes and um, cassettes to having DVDs to having cordless phones to having huge box looking cell phones to small cell phones to flat screen TVs to Bluetooth technology to what we are today. In that short amount of time, we went from technology that had been developed mm, quite a long time before that to bef- you know to under 10 years having cell phones to having um on 2003 bluetooth technology you know laptops and flat screen tvs our movies began to be shot in widescreen and displayed in that same format so if that happened in that short amount of time do you think it's because they were just learning how to develop that technology and it just got that good that quick and they released it immediately? Or do you think that maybe it's because they had these technologies? The military had these technologies. And during that time, they saw a need for it to be publicized to advance our world and to advance our communication structures and to advance the way that we operate. And if you go off of that, mindset if you go off that theory then that means fast forward to 2017 what they have now (laughs) if they were willing to give us that then first of all that means they must have got on to something better and if they went on to something better in the 90s and early 2000s we are now in 2017 you can just imagine what they have now with unlimited resources unlimited money the best scientists on this planet Earth, and some would argue on other planets too, because some people would argue that we get a lot of our technology through alien extraterrestrial communications. But if you want to be more practical than that, just look at that. In that short amount of time, we advance that quickly to the point that we are today. And if we are where we are today, which we have virtual reality now, it's not in every home, but it's out there. You can test it out at your local um, cell phone store or electronic store. Some of your friends have it, these Oculus Rift devices and other so-called devices. So if we have that, oh, there's also robots now. There's also robots that that help in manufacturing. There's um, robotic forklifts that do not require a driver now. There are um, just human companion robots that are beginning to, to, to be seen on the market. They're thousands of dollars but they're beginning and a lot of and not a lot but a few people have those there's artificial intelligence now we've begun to learn how to teach our computers to talk and learn for themselves so in that mindset is it far-fetched to believe in a secret space program is it far-fetched to believe what Corey good has said and has uh has stated is that far-fetched so what is the purpose of these programs? Well, you know, there's very many different reasonings behind this. Some of these programs have been designed to investigate human beings uh, and humankind. Some have been developed to protect the, that same group. Some have been developed to advance our technology, to advance our position within the universe and in space. Some have been developed to control and to keep isolated and defenseless some sectors of the population, of humankind, of mankind, of, and maybe even some uh, alien races. There's a uh, conference, uh, I think it's called the D- Disclosure Conference, that happens almost every year. It's a, it's a conference that goes over this kind of stuff. It goes over these programs. It goes over, um, it's, I'm sorry, it's called the Secret Space Program Conference. <laughs> Should, should have been easy to get that one. The Secret Space Program Conference. And it, it has lead researchers and investigators in the field of ufology that come together and talk about this stuff. And they, and they bring their, um, their, theory, their theories together and try to figure out, you know, what's the truth. Um, if you go to Vimeo.com, you can pull up uh, the actual, I think it's like a dollar. You can rent the videos of these conferences and see what people were talking about. But they got people such as uh, John Brandenburg. He was, uh, he's a researcher heavily invested in Mars, um, the destruction of Mars and everything like that. Um, 
Um, they had Joseph P. Farrell, who talks a lot about um, cosmic uh, space wars and things. Uh, Walter Bosley is a researcher. Paul Lavoyliet, who's a reverse engineering uh, researcher. Jim Mars, uh, he's a remote viewer. He's a well-known in the field. Linda Moulton Howe is well-known in the field. She's been a UFO reporter for many, many years. Uh, Olaf Phillips, Catherine Austin Fitz, Joseph P. Farrell, well, we said him. Jade Dyer um, talks about predictive programming a lot. But, uh, yeah, there's uh, several several known people, well-established people that, that talk about this program, talk about these programs and this type of technology. I just think it's funny how um, it's getting a little bit more mainstream. Now, I mean, you're not going to hear about this on CNN and Fox and all that because they're too preoccupied with everything else that they do. But um, Russia Today has had discussions on this. There's news agencies throughout the world. And there's other countries who have said, yeah, we know they exist. So is 2017 going to be the year when this all comes um, out? Are we going to get like a full disclosure on our technology and of our space programs and our dealings in space? Um, one thing that came out recently that has got a lot of attention from um, people in this field was Antarctica. I don't know if you remember, but there was a stories that, that floated around Facebook. And I think the mainstream even picked up on this um, about something in Antarctica. People were going to antarctica nobody knows why they were just going there was um several individuals that were going somebody with the catholic church um representative representatives within the government of the united states and including uh uh, astronaut john glenn well apparently they uncovered now what they tell you you know so far hasn't been very accurate i don't believe but what people in this field are discussing is how they have gotten word that they uncovered an ancient city that had ancient technology that was far more advanced than what we have now and that there were bioorganisms that were discovered that were like nothing that they have ever seen before they were foreign from this earth that was on some of this technology and who knows? Maybe it goes beyond that. Well, that's what they found so far, according to sources. So, I mean, I can't think of any other reason for to have an astronaut rush down there, to have um, key figures within the United States government rush down there, to have you know world figures such as a representative from the Catholic Church run down there. And it was all during the same time period. It's like, it was almost like someone pulled the fire alarm and, uh, you know, they needed uh, to get down there quick for some reason. Now, it's all blown over now. You don't hear about much of it now, but something happened. Is that related to this? It's hard to say. But, wow, it's, uh, <laughs> we've been on here for a while. I haven't realized we didn't, wow. Uh, it's coming down to the end of the program, so... You know, looking at this secret space program, it's very convincing. It's very, um, I've been following it here for a few years now, just kind of letting it come in and out, you know, one side and go out the other. And uh, just been picking up synchronicities that have been happening in this thing. And it's just been elevating since 2014. It has been, the information has just been progressing, becoming more realistic, becoming more collaborated with other researchers and and scientific um, investigations and astronomers. So it might might be something there. So keep your eye out for this, for this secret space program stuff, um, SAPs, SSPs, MIC programs, and let's see where it goes.